Hi guys, this is just a quick video to show you how to test your contract. So for example, if you have a contract which is based on ERC 721A, in ERC 721A, uh, basically there is a gas optimization done and instead of doing mint one at a time, uh, you can just call the safe mint function and pass the number of tokens. So that's, that's the main difference between ERC 721 and ERC 721A. Anyways, I wanted to test uh, my mint function which is the mint whitelist and I have got multiple conditions uh, that are applicable especially the valid Michael proof condition so what I did was I started writing a test so the way I have written this test is uh, initially I'm doing a flip of white whitelist sale because one of the conditions over here is is the sale active is the sale active is the modifier uh, at the bottom it checks the sale must be active before I do the mint so it's a very common thing in all the contracts that you have got like a flip sale a flip whitelist sale function which basically say, uh, turns on the sale so i've just done that i've turned on the sale first second thing that i've done is uh, we need to set the merkle root on the contract so rather than going to like ether scan and then uh, doing the uh, like testing over here like set merkle uh, whitelist root whatever uh, over here so it should be set whitelist merkle root uh, so normally people basically test it via the UI. I like to test it uh, using the unit test. Uh, the way I've done it is I'm using chai, heart, head and all, all this. Uh, so basically once you flip the switch, this will become true. Now you can have the sale as active. Second thing is you need to generate the Merkle tree root. So in order to generate a Merkle tree root, I needed to find out my address in the contract. So uh, the address that, to which I'm basically testing the contract. So what I did was let me just quickly show you. So because this is in JavaScript, you can do uh, whatever your address is. You can just put it like owner dot address here. Uh, the way I'm getting the owner is when I'm initializing the uh, basically the test in before each function, I'm calling await ethers dot get signers and I can get owner and addresses so when i get the owner i can say owner dot address and it should print something on my screen it's compiling the contract right now it's deploying on my local it's running the previous task and you can see that it has printed the address now what i did was i used this address and i generated a merkle root using my script so uh, in my script over here uh, i basically added the address and the merkle uh, tree file basically generates the address for me so this is where it generated the address and i copied this address and i added that into the test here once i got this address um, many of you were asking me about the merkle tree api so the way i've done it is i have got uh, an amplify so um, I've used AWS amplify to create a lambda function and in this lambda function I'm just uh, uh, basically asking people to like send a project ID and the wallet and then using the data.json that I've got over here where I have just added the same address that I got from the test uh, and then this basically gives me back the Merkle proof and you can see that over here like when I hit the address, when I hit the API with this address, if I ch change the address to something else, it will say it's not valid, so valid equal to false. But if I do this, it will give me the valid address. As you can see over here, I copied this address and I then added that into my test over here in the mint function. So if you remember the mint whitelist function is the function which we are testing over here. So if I go to mint whitelist, so it checks is the sale active. So what we have done is we have flipped the switch to make the sale active. Now second test was what's the Merkle proof? The Merkle proof is this Merkle proof. What's the whitelist uh, Merkle root? Whitelist Merkle root is stored in the contract. So we get it from here and that we, we are basically setting uh, during the contract setup. Can claim token. Can, can claim token is the function is the modifier which basically checks uh, how many uh, tokens can be claimed by wallet. And then uh, is a payment correct it's just a regular require check that you're uh, sending the right amount uh, and let me just show you that modifier as well so so incorrect uh, ether scan and then 
uh, is correct amount. So amount is basically over here. I'm, uh, I, I think this modifier name could be better. It's basically checking the number of tokens. Here is checking the correct payment and number of tokens per transaction. So maybe there is an improvement over there. Is supply remaining? It checks if you're not exceeding the supply. And then non re-entering means that uh, the smart contracts or bots cannot ent uh, interact with this. And uh, because this is a possible contract, uh, if you pause it, it, this function will not work. So that's my main mint function for the Merkle tree. Uh, and you can see that over here, I'm testing it using uh, the Merkle proof. I'm just passing in the value. So if you look at the function, it takes two parameters, Merkle proof and number of tokens. So number of tokens is one. And uh, the third parameter, because it is a payable function, as you can see over here, I need to pass as a third parameter value and the value would be whatever the value. So I've got whitelist price as a public variable. And because it's a public variable, I can access it uh, by default because in Solidity, all the public variables have the uh, uh, accessors available. So I don't need to create a get function for it. I can just say uh, whitelist price. So this is a whitelist price. As you can see, it's public. I can use whitelist price and then round brackets for that. Now, uh, because I've got a token, let me see, token URI function, a token URI function which has a condition if the token has been revealed. If it hasn't been revealed, it will basically give you a not revealed URI. Uh, but in this case, I want to just test the real token ID that is being given me, uh, uh, that, that is basically coming up. So I turn on the reveal and then um, I've just set a base URI because if I set the base URI, it will give me the uh, thing, some, something similar to IPFS uh, slash base and then the actual token ID. So after doing the mint, I'm basically checking the token URI for token number one. Now you must be wondering why I'm checking for token number one, not token number zero. Uh, well, ERC721A has got uh, like a function which you can override, which is the star token ID and I've overridden it to one. So my first minted token would be one, not zero. So I know this is a lot of information in one video, but I have been working on some projects right now. As you can see, this is also a live project. Uh, and it has been a while since I've created a video. So uh, here you go. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I have answered one of the questions about the API in this video. I have answered a question about ERC721A that was being asked, like how do you use a uh, min function or Michael root in ERC721A? And I have shown you how to test a contract. So those were the three objectives of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep watching, subscribe, like, and uh, positive comments. I would really appreciate all the comments that you are sending me. I'm, I'm happy to interact. I'm happy to help you with all the work that you're doing. Keep as much, uh, I keep positive as much as possible because that, that's what I enjoy. Uh, any kind of criticism, feel free to do that. And I, I would be happy to take feedback. Thank you.